Well, hello again folks. Hope you are all still keeping well out there. And, welcome to another video, hey. This is another video from the hard drive that time forgot. And, believe it or not, it stretches back to April 2014 when I filmed this. Just in case you were wondering why I look so much younger in it. It also features my old Theoban MFR. A gun that I fondly remember and used for many years until I finally upgraded it to the, one of the FX crowns. Now, I think I have shown Hyde set up in some of my earlier videos, but don't do it as much now because people find it boring. So if you're one of those folk and want to get straight to the action, fast forward to about 6 minutes 40 seconds. If you're one of the people who want to watch how I set the hide up, then just sit back, relax and keep watching hey. The hide I'm using is called the Bush from Bushware.com and I've had it for years and have even replaced the chair in it when the original one broke. And I anchor it to the ground with a bungee cord and a ground anchor. You can get them from pet stores, it's basically to screw into the lawn to attach a dog lead to. And this helps stabilise the hide and stops it from falling forward when you're trying to get out of it. The corner of the field that I'm setting up in, it's well out of the road and it's an area I have shot many hooded crows and magpies from over the years. It's owned by a local farmer who usually lambs sheep out in this ground every spring. So he likes me to come along and try and get rid of as many hooded crows and magpies as I can to help protect the sheep and lambs. Now, these small pop-up hides don't have a great arc of fire from left to right. So once I have it tethered to the ground, I like getting into it and shifting it around so it's pointed in the exact direction that I need it to be. Then, as well as the piece of camouflage net, I've pegged to the main opening. I also drape a camouflage net over the whole hide to help give it a more leafy, natural look. I think the net I was using back then was from Deben, and either a real tree or wetlands type camouflage pattern. They were a fairly lightweight net and easy to pack away into your bag. Now though, I prefer using one of the Stealth Ghost 2 ply nets as it's a much darker colour which matches the sort of hedgerows that I work round. I also would tie a lot of different colours of raffia grass to the camouflage netting that you can get from craft shops or Amazon. This helps it blend into the hedgerow even more as in the winter time there's not a lot of foliage growing that you can naturally add to the net. Once I have the hide built, and the way I want it, it's time to get the rest of the gear into it. Likes of the rifle, pellets, shooting sticks and so forth. Unfortunately, since I have so much camouflage over the hide, it can be awkward getting stuff in and out of it. But I've learnt from that, and nowadays I put the rifle and sticks into the hide first, before I drape the camouflage net over it. I usually place the decoy and bait out about 40 yards from the hide with the FAC air rifles and about 25 yards for the lower part air rifles. But generally, the further away from cover you set the bait and decoy out, the more confidence the birds have to land, as there's less likelihood of something jumping out at them. Therefore, the likes of the 2-2 rimfire or even a small centre fire like my 17 Hornet that I use in my other channel Nitro HV actually works quite well out to 50 to 100 yards into the field. 
the bait that I'm using is a dead rabbit, which I split open and shake the guts out of, to look like something like a fox has killed it that night, ate its fill and left the rest. I even took one of the rabbit legs and set it on top of a small action camera that I used to set out into the field to see if I could get some nice close up footage. I don't use it anymore as I found that the large round lens seemed to spook some of the birds even though I had it well camouflaged with grass and that. The decoy that I'm using is a dead magpie as I don't remember having a hooded crow at hand which I place into a little wire cradle that I make out of a coat hanger and have a video on my channel on how to do that but it keeps the bird sitting upright on its own feet and very realistically looking. Ok, the hide's built, the decoy and bait's out, there's cameras rolling, all I have to do is get myself into the hide, comfortable, rifle loaded on the sticks and we're ready to go hey. Oh man, I forgot, I had hair back then, I'm plenty of it. Well, suppose this is almost 10 years ago. Oh, I remember those days when the wife used to run her fingers through my... Anyway, where were we? Um, hide, yes. We're sitting in the hide, still haven't got set up yet, and guess what happens? A hood at crow lands. Oh why? and for those of you who skipped the first part, welcome back hey. You'll never believe what you missed. I laughed so hard. Anyway, it's too late to go back over it now. Where were we? Yes, the hide's built, the bait's out. I've just managed to get myself into the hide and a hooded crow's appeared. Now, it's still semi-dark so I wasn't expecting the birds to show up so quick. Which has sort of caught me unawares. But all I really need to do is get the magazine loaded, put into the rifle, then gingerly put the rifle up onto the shooting sticks and ah oh, nuts it's away. Guess I should have loaded the magazine with pellets before I came out. Okay now I'm ready and as I said earlier the rifle I'm using is my the open MFR long since traded in for an FX crown. The scope on it was a Miopta 4 16 by 44 tactical and it was running at about 30 plus foot pounds with 0.22 Bisley Magnum pellets. Now unfortunately there's no scope cam footage in this because this was long before I had anything like that. So it's back to old school filming with a camcorder sitting on a tripod beside me in the hide which needs moved and zoomed in before I take each shot. Now I'm sure as some of you may have frustratingly noticed the magpies have found the bait. Now this isn't unusual as they're usually a wee bit quicker in the uptake than the hooded crows. They're just not as cautious. But the hooded crow is my number one target. So I usually let the magpies feed away and use them like live decoys to bring the hooded crows in. And for you magpie haters out there, don't worry, it's common, they don't get away scot free all morning. Now, I'm sure you can hear by the audio, it started to rain and it's turning into a real wet, drizzly eye morning. And the magpies have been coming and going off of that bait all morning with no signs of a hooded crow. And my patience has finally wore thin. I'm going to war on the magpies. It's hit hard and that's as far as it gets. The 
before long, its mates return to see what all the commotion's about. Stone dead, with a shot between the shoulder blades. Oh my word, look who's turned up to the party late. Would you sit still? I have to keep moving the camera to make sure you're still in shot. I don't know how I managed for so long without the Tacticam. Down, clean as a whistle, with a standard air rifle pellet at about 860 feet per second. Then I noticed his mate lands a wee bit to the left hand side and I get onto it too. It knows something's wrong as it's gone all quiet. But it's too late. After a while, the magpies start to take an interest in the carnage below them. It's hit hard and it's done. Curiosity killed more than just the cat. I spotted another hooded crow up in the trees watching everything. But it never did get up the courage to come down to the ground. And it was way too far for my liking. After a while, another magpie came floating in on the breeze and landed on the far side of the kill zone. And at about 45 yards, it was in trouble. It was a solid enough hit to the chest with the busy magnum zipping clean through it. It ran round in a bit of a semicircle and then dropped dead. Well, I've been here for a good few hours and it looks like the rest of the birds are giving me a wide berth. I might have been able to get something more if I had set one or two of the birds I'd shot up as decoys, but I was getting cold, tired and hungry and looking forward to getting home. Oh. Okay, let's see how we've done. Oh, there's the second greyback crow. A shot there. A heart shot. That's the first one. And that was one of the later magpies. I'm not sure if that was the first bird I shot. It's wet enough anyway, so and then one here right beside the camera I've set up with a rabbit leg on to camouflage it. So 
and then we're a magpie away here. Must have another, another 45 yard shot. So, that's one, two, three, four magpies, and one, two hooded crows. Pretty good for an air rifle this morning. Quite chuffed with that. Of course, a dead rabbit for bait. And a magpie decoy I've set up. And the little wire cradle I make myself out of coat hanger. Which has proved quite effective. I didn't think I was going to get anything this morning. The way the rain was starting to come down. I was almost about ready to quit and pack up. I'm glad I stayed though. So, good result. I'll just give the place a wee tidy before I go. Much as the farmer doesn't like seeing hooded crows and magpies about, he doesn't want to see their dead carcasses strewn all over his fields either. So I'll drop them into a thick hedge somewhere out of the road and the foxes and badgers can have them. And no, I don't eat crows and magpies. They're like the bin men of the bird world and will often be seen eating rotten carcasses lying at the side of the road. Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed that little trip down memory lane. And hopefully if the weather cooperates, I'll be able to get out before Christmas and get some fresh footage. But until then, take care and look after yourselves, hey! <laughs>